One of the things that we saw going into the Dolphin to Pascal was that was this change in displays, right? That, you know, that idea of, of for a single flat display that is where the original OpenGL pipeline from 800,000 years ago was designed, that's just not, that's not the way the world has, has gone to, right? Um, we have surround displays, we've got multiple displays to project onto, curved displays. Uh, you know, VR, of course, was a very, is a, is a big development. Um, now you've got actually a lens between you and, and the display, so that's, it's, it, the classical projection is actually just wrong when there's a lens in the way, because you actually have to project in a way that's the inverse of that lens in order to see the right thing on the other side. Um, so that, that's the domain. And then, you know, looking beyond into the future, you know, lenticular displays where you have, you know, a whole bunch of different projections that you can see, you know, as display resolutions go up, I'd expect that's going to become, you know, an interesting scenario, augmented reality, other, other kinds of scenarios. <laughs> so what all these have in common is that it's just not the one simple projection, you're doing many projections. And the way you do that today is you have to just multipass it, right? If you need eight projections, you run through all the, uh, the whole work eight times. You need 16 through 16 times. And you know, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not a good thing, right? That's not the right way to do it. And so you know, we, we realized that it, was, it would be better if we built an architecture that enabled you to in a single pass turn that geometry through. And, and, and then broadcast it out to each proper projection. That's, uh, that's what first of all, most of you guys understand how graphics work, but I'd like to just do a quick recap. Artists create these three-dimensional models, right? So in this case, it might be a, a, you know, a pyramid or square or a ball or whatever, and then they're, they're placed in a three-dimensional scene, right? And that's what you see in the background here, that kind of arc. It's the geometry, right? You all know about the geometry pipeline. Now, the next thing that has to happen is that geometry needs to get projected to a screen so you can look at it. And that's what's represented by the green box. So this act of projection was very simple in the past, as Jonah said, right? It's, it's classic, it's well understood, and that's why it was generally sort of fixed and very simple logic. And that's all changed because now monitors are getting different. So in this application, I can kind of move our position around and look at it. It's, it's a, you know, by the way, this is just a simulation. It's not accurate, right? It's not completely true, but it's, it's illustrating the points, okay? So if you look at this, you can kind of move your viewpoint around, imagine you're looking around the world, but at the end of the day, it's a square and a single projection. But life has changed, as Jonas said, and so I'm gonna to try to show you that, right? This is the example we showed last night, and now instead of one projection, right, we've got three monitors. And what happens is the game has no idea, really, that it's three monitors. It thinks it's one projection, it's just a big wide projection, right? So, by the way, how you doing? Good, Good. I've seen all three. So, uh, <laughs> Again, you got this 3D map up there, right? Now the cool part is, the world does not change independent of the projection, right? The projection is, the, is the, the last part of the pipeline, but you have to do all the math for the world independent of the projection. Okay, now the last step that happens here, of course, is uh, if you kind of dig in here and you look at this, and I know Kyle, you know all about this, right? If you look on the side, it's really far away. So what people do is they bend the monitors in. And if you bend the monitor in, What's happening is you're looking at this distorted world, right? <laughs> the sides are stretched because if you back out a little bit, you know, and kind of look at this thing, if I can get it, the game, again, and the projection that was originally done had no idea that the monitors were going to be bent. Okay, so now the right way to do this, as we said last night, is to turn on our magic uh, SMP. So when you bend your monitors, what's actually happening is you're opening up the window into the world. It's a much wider field of view and the sides are no longer distorted, right? We showed you the demo live. And if you come in here and you just look around, it's kind of amazing, right? And if you, if you imagine moving your view inside the game, you're just moving around in a gigantic window. So it's a very simple idea, but it's powerful implications for the way gamers are gonna kind of enjoy their PCs. So Tom, can I interject for yes. one second here? Okay, so, so, I think that, so th this, is, this is the, one of the points here is this is now where we're introducing this idea of multi-projection, right? So one projection, if you actually could you go back to the single projection thing there, right? Um, this one? Uh, just with the single display. Yes. Right. So so projection is fundamentally you have an eye point, and you have you know one, and you're looking off at <coughs> a point. That's that's basically one projection, right? So basically, so then I go to the other one there, Tom. Sure. So what makes so this is really still one projection because you're fundamentally looking at the same distance, and then if you go back to that other one, Tom. This is where now you actually have three projections because fundamentally 
you know, you have one projection that's pointing out that way, but the, off the, the one off the side is now a new projection. So it's a different projection, so you have a different projection matrix you have to deal with in the design, right? Um, because it's not, it's not the same uh, point of view. It's not, not going to be the same map as the first one. And then, of course, on the right is a third projection. So now you have, now you have three separate projections uh, that, that the hardware is processing here. Now, the exciting part for me, anyway, is that the world geometry that you can see out there is, of course, independent of the projection. So you don't really need to rerun the world like you do today on classic designs, right? If you wanted to do this correctly in a game that doesn't know about SMP, you would do the left view, and you'd run that full pipeline, and then you'd do the middle view, and then you'd do the right view. So it's, it's dramatically improving the performance for, uh, for that type of application. Continue. Continue. All right, here we go. You were on fire, Tom. Communication. <laughs> okay. Now this one's going to be a little bit more complex, so I'm going to go uh, as slow as, I, as you'll allow me. So what you're looking at here is the VR use case. And as Jensen said last night, the first thing that jumps out at you or jumps out at me is that we can actually do two viewports or two projections, two completely uh, camera points in stereo at the same time. We call that uh, single pass stereo. It's a capability of SMP. So what single pass stereo means is that as we're going through the pipeline, we're going to be able to actually generate both of these independent positions at one time. Now that's a, a capability on top of the fact that we can transform these projections. So if, you, if, you, if I drop the lens for a second, let's start talking about VR in general. You all know why there's two projections, right? It's because two eyes, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Um, the question is, what do you see? Well, inside a VR headset, hopefully you guys realize there's a lens. The lens is in there so that you can focus on a screen that's two inches in front of your head. If you didn't have the lens, you'd feel like you, know, you, can't, you can't focus, everything looks blurry and you get headaches. So the big invention of this time's worth of VR is that lens. Now, if you think about it, lenses by their nature distort. So I'm going to simulate a lens here. Now, again, this is just a simulation. It's not perfect. But if I move this lens around, look at what's happening to the image. The square here represents what you would see at the back side of the lens. And if you look at the square, right, as, as I rotate the view around, you see that sort of uh, pin cushiony looking distortion? That distortion is caused by the lens, okay? It has nothing to do with us. It's just, it's just optics. Now, the way VR today works with this is they bend the image and they render this full size. So let me drop the lens again. So you're going to render this full size image and then you're going to bend it and you're going to shrink it down. And that really is waste, right? Because you rendered this full rectangle and you're going to bend it in so that you're going, you can effectively match the distortion of the lens. Um, so a better way to do it is what we call lens match shading. Indeed. Indeed. So lens match shading looks exactly like this, right? We're going to, uh, instead of bending, maybe, let's see, please stand by. Yes. Okay, instead of being square, we're going to distort the, uh, the projection, both projections for the left and the right eye, and we're going to create these shapes that look exactly like the eventual lens distortion filter that you're going to run. Okay, so instead of rendering this full rectangle, now we're actually going to rec render just the center part, right? Only where there's a projection do we actually do work. Okay, so that's pretty clear, right? Now, at the end of the day, the cool part is if you put a lens on this again, and you look at it, you're rotating around the world with our, our, our now, uh, um, call it SMP lens match shading shape for the projection, and you can see that it's completely correct. And the big benefit is uh, a little bit better quality, but mostly it's more efficient work. Okay, so for VR, we've got these two things. We've got this um, single pass stereo and lens match shading, both are part of SMP. So Tom, actually, just I, I want to make sure people can see the sort of how the multi-projection is working here. So could you kind of flip over to the side so we can look at the, those lens shapes a little bit, or the, the projector shapes a little bit? Sure, of course. Okay. okay. Yeah. So so you can kind of see here that the that shape is 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 basically like four tiles effectively, right? So the what we're what we're looking at what we're doing is we're trying to approximate the the the, the desired uh, projection for the lens. So. The projection you, you want, the perfect projection basically, would be actually this kind of this curved shape. It's a little bit curved, kind of like a lens is curved, right? And you want to ideally approximate that as closely as you can. Now, obviously, a single projection like we would normally do is a very poor approximation of that shape, right? It's 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 uh, it's correct in the middle. You go off to the sides. It's not matching that lens that lens shape at all anymore, right? And this shape 
with with these four tiles, four separate projections, one sort of tilting off this way, one off this way, one off this way, one off this way, now you have a much more accurate approximation of, of that lens shape. And, and the more accurate approximation of lens shape, the more efficient you're being in the design because you're not, uh, you're not oversampling unnecessarily in the periphery. Uh, you're, you're starting at a very good, at a very good point. Okay. I think that concludes I our prepared remarks. Yeah, all right. Any questions?